Hello, this is Crossing the Sticks with a Guild Wars 2 news for the week of December 19th, 2011. Without any major announcements this week, this shouldn't be very long, but I will go over World vs. World PvP, which I neglected in the last video, and the dynamic events which are supposed to make Guild Wars 2 a venture into the unknown, as far as MMOs usually go. So last week I did not clarify the difference between World vs. World PvP and Structured PvP. World vs. World is not conquest mode, and it seems as if there is not a limit on the amount of players it can access the battleground at one time. This means several hundred can be battling it out at any given time. For launch, there are four World PvP maps planned, and all serve as a battleground for three different servers every two weeks. On the map, there are resources and objectives which are there to be captured, such as castles, mercenary camps, lumber mills, fortresses, and villages. The different objectives are designed to be captured by different sized groups. For example, the smaller groups may take out caravans of resources, but the larger groups will take and hold castles and fortresses. These are not short matches either, and they will last for the duration of the two weeks. A constant struggle for control, with players dropping in and out, will continue until the two weeks are up. The worlds are then ranked, allowing to have better matchups, and then the worlds resume fighting against perhaps new opponents. There's no reason that anyone should ever need to leave World PvP if they wanted to stay there. They can gain experience and gain loot. It's important to note that all participants will be automatically leveled to 80 during their stay in the battlefield through the sidekicking system. The best thing about this, I think, is bringing the server together in a way that promotes large guilds and general camaraderie among the world's inhabitants. Oh joy, oh joy. Dynamic events are supposed to completely change the way that we play MMOs. Departing from the regular model of quest givers that give quests that don't change anything, dynamic events will instead pose an immediate threat to something. Whether it be an outpost that's being attacked or a dragon that needs killing, you don't know when a dynamic event will pop up. Your choice in it will affect the fate of that area. Perhaps the dragon will go on to destroy other areas if you don't stop him, or the outpost will be unable to send resources to another area. That outpost may even become a fortress for the force which overtook it, making another event which needs to be conquered. These events are designed to bring people together to cooperate, which will chain together in different ways depending on the outcome. These chains of dynamic events will try to create new storytelling method in Guild Wars 2. Instead of the walls of text that plagued MMOs of the past, Guild Wars 2 will try to focus instead on seeing the events unfold before your very eyes, and will let you choose if you want to intervene or not. At the end of the event, you will receive coin, experience, and karma. If you succeed, you get more than if you lose, but in both cases, you are rewarded. Loot, however, is not a reward at the end, it is instead dropped off of the enemies that you kill during the event. A player won't feel obligated to participate in the event if they don't want to. But thank you for watching, this has been uh, Crossing the Sticks. Remember, you don't have to cross the sticks in order to find Guild Wars 2 news. All you have to do is come right here. On Wednesday, expect to see a video on the Norn race. And I will see you next time.